But quite often when markets break, it's things other than the things that are being watched that cause the upset. Why? Because they surprise. This is Kaiser Johnson with Liberty and Finance, and these are the Miles Franklin Weekly Specials for March 25th through April 1st, 2024, while supplies last. First, we feature 2023 one-ounce silver Krugerrands at $3.10 over spot. We also have backdated one-tenth ounce gold Canadian maples at $35 over melt with a minimum order of four. And finally, we're offering our choice one-ounce palladium bars at just $119 over spot. To order our specials or any of the many other options we have available, call us at 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237. We're available after hours and on weekends, and we look forward to speaking with you. Hey everyone, this is Elijah K. Johnson with Liberty and Finance. And back with us today is our good friend Michael Oliver from Momentum Structural Analysis, OliverMSA.com. Michael, thank you so much for joining us today. Good to be here, Elijah. Well, it's great to have you. I did want to discuss gold continuing to make all-time highs. We've seen a pop today as we record this on Thursday. Uh, Your perspective on the gold market recently, and obviously we'll get to the other markets as well that have been very interesting, but gold first. Uh, Yeah, gold is behaving. It's the leader of of the pack, the mama market. Uh, Silver and the miners still lag, but I think that's about to change. And I, I say that technically. Uh, in other words, we, we measure the relationship between silver and gold uh, in terms of the momentum of the spread and also the miners versus gold. And we all know, everybody knows who's in that market that the miners have gone down for the last several years. Uh, GDX, for example, had a peak trade back in 2020 at $45. Right now it's trading at 31 Okay, and that's a rally. Okay, so while gold's well above the highs of the last few years, the miners are still well below. And uh, I think that's about to change, uh, especially if we close the month out near today's highs or close next month out at these levels. So we've got some annual momentum measurements of these markets, meaning long term trend metrics. They're about to engage in a way that says, OK, sleepy time is over. And I think that that, that will wake up silver and the miners relative to gold. Now, what are some of the drivers you see that are causing gold to make all-time highs right now and these other markets not to, for example, uh, silver and the miners? Well, you know, I'm not sure why they, they have to underperform, but historically, you go back 50 years and look at the various bull trends in gold and coincident bull trends in silver and the miners, they quite often will lag. Uh, they'll, they'll go along with the gold bull, but they'll, they'll be weaker until... Late in the bull trend, for instance, uh, the last two bull trends in, in gold uh, and silver, uh, silver accelerated massively, especially in the last year of the bull market. Now, remember, this bull market in gold is not new. It's been underway since the low in 2015. So it's, uh, you know, a lot of years and we've only doubled plus. And most of the gold bull markets were <laughs> eightfold moves. And we've got events around us now that are horrific in terms of potential dynamics of certain markets going down big. I think the stock market is a trap. I think the teasing new highs that we've seen above the highs of two years ago, which so far has only been marginal, by the way, S&P is like 5% above those highs. It took it two years to get back up there. We don't trust it. Okay. But I think what drives gold is not so much the day-to-day headlines and things that people would like to link to gold movement. You're like, oh, this data came out and therefore gold went up. You know, uh, Gold has been around for 3,000 years. Okay, S&P has been around since 1950s. <laughs> the Federal Reserve has been around for a century. So they're baby markets compared to gold. Okay, And I think what gold sees coming is what we see technically. And that is a lot of markets where a lot of assets have been committed and hopes be- based upon Uh, and inflated by the Fed over the past dozen years plus uh, through cheap interest rates and money flow. When those break, it's going to be painful and painful in areas of the economy that the Fed cannot put up with. In other words, cannot allow. Uh, They like to break commodities, they say, you know, although commodities, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, What they're going to break and what we our assessment is, is they're going to break the stock market and some other related markets. Real estate's already in trouble. 
uh, and so forth. But uh, when it breaks, remember 2008 and 9. Remember the in the street pain that people felt, even if they weren't in the stock market. They got laid off, et cetera, et cetera. You know, all kinds of hurt and doubt. And when that happens, panic sets in. And I think the stock market is in a teasing last mode here in terms of its upside probing. And uh, when it when it fails, it's going to surprise people and start. That's when you'll start to see those data points that everybody likes to point to suddenly change. It won't change ahead of the stock market. They'll change after the stock market. That's usually the way it, it occurs. And that's when the Fed, the other central banks will have to revert back to what they do best. And they've already said, we're going to cut rates three times this year. OK, just a matter of when. Uh, why did they say that? What concerns them? You know, uh, uh, one thing that concerned them is their bond market crashed last fall. You know, that, that concerned them greatly. So anyway, gold sees this and it knows ultimately, no matter what the Fed said for the last year or so, uh, that's going to go by the way. And the central banks are going to go back to liquidity, easier rates, et cetera, et cetera, meaning what they do best, which means inflationary policies. And that's why gold is pushing at all time highs. Now, when it comes to the stock market, I know that you've talked about in your uh, momentum structural analysis newsletter, we are going to be seeing um, issues if we fall below key levels uh, in the stock market. So can you share what your momentum analysis has been telling you? We measure the market via, via various timescales of measurement, things that look will generate near-term movements, intermediate trends, and long-term trends. As it happens right now, called these like dominoes that are lined up. When the shorter term stuff topples, it's likely to topple into the medium term stuff, into the longer term stuff. And there's a tight cluster of numbers. It won't take much to get a small crescendo on the downside to turn into something larger. <clears throat> I'll toss out a number for you. Right now, the s and is trading around 5,250. You don't want to see 5,200 next month. You close there, close the day around the 5,200 mark. I'm going to start breaking stuff. And that's true with most of the indexes and subsectors within the market as well. They can't sneeze. If they do, they're going to start to topple. And that's a monthly momentum time scale. In other words, let me put it this way. If you look at a price chart of the S&P, each month rises for the last five or six, okay? <clears throat> Not explosively, actually. I think this month's only up a couple of percent. But it's a continual rise. But when you look at monthly momentum, you have a flat floor. Perfectly flat. You could take a crayon and draw through the December, January, February, March lows on the oscillator. So you have a distinctly different technical vista when you look at momentum than when you look at price. And that floor that I just described on monthly momentum of the S&P and most indexes is literally a sneeze below you. And once you break it, you open a void of about, oh, at least 5 or 10% where you could drop that much. The problem is you'll topple other dominoes if you do that. So anyway, I think the market's in a predicament right here. And I think gold knows that. Uh, and it's not waiting for the event. Um, and that's what I think is going on there. I think it's, it, the stock market is important to gold as it will be important to the Fed. And you've long talked about how when this crash occurs, or not a crash, but this sell-off occurs, then we will see instead of gold falling with the stock market, we'll actually see a lot of money flow into stocks. And this coinciding with the Fed really pivoting and easing again, that extra cash has previously gone into the stock market, but this time into the precious metal markets. Can you expand on this and give us an update of what you see happening when the Fed starts easing? Well, gold will already be ahead of the game. Okay. And we're at certain levels right now on silver and the miners as well that will cause them to engage in a more dramatic manner. I mean, literally, the price is up to a level that will break annual momentum through a trigger level. OK. And at that point, I think they'll suddenly get a jolt and join gold. But already we've seen some large asset managers, and I don't mean gold bugs, but just general large hedge fund um, and other fund managers shift into the miners, which I find very interesting. Uh, Jeff, uh, was it uh, Stanley Druckenmiller, I think it was, like a month ago, announced he was dumping, uh, maybe it was less than a month ago, dumping some big large tech stock, stocks and going into uh, Newmont and Barrett Gold, uh, two of the big blue chip gold miners. 
Uh, and you got to realize this sector, if, if, and there's been some other, my, other hedge fund managers that have done the same. So they're starting to move some of their capital over into a sector that they view as both vastly undervalued and also ultimately linked to gold. And they, I think, see what we see as the potential dynamics here. And rather than wait for the event, they're starting to move some assets over. But the fact is, though, the gold and silver mining sector is a tiny little sector. Uh, it won't take much capital to boost it. Uh, I use the, the you know, the, this idea of the wet bar of soap being grabbed by people. You know, it squirts up. Uh, and that's basically what we've got with the miners right now, I think, is a vastly oversold market situation, undervalued by any metrics, undervalued in relation to gold, undervalued in relation to the historical relationship to the S&P, et cetera. And when the money starts to get doubtful to the stock market, remember, some of these fund managers that are in the stock market doubt it, but they've got to be in it because they're competing with peers who are in it. And if they're not in it and catching the profits, then, you know, they lose client base. So they're in it, but they're doubters. And it won't take much uh, provoking on the part of a, a wobble in the stock market to cause them to move more and more assets into categories they deem to be alternatives. And I think the gold miners are one of those prime categories. Now, if we're looking at the charts, for example, of gold, obviously a lot of people and a lot of the technical traders are seeing that it, you know, it was testing that 2000, it was 2000, the question was, is 2000 support or is it a resistance, right? And we held above 2000 for quite a while and we finally broke above the 2100 level. So that's what all the technical analysts, everyone can see that. From your momentum analysis, what is that showing about where gold is right now? The, the mistake that most technicians are making right now in regard to gold and the miners and silver as well is they're taking the metrics of the last several years and treating it as the norm. And therefore, what the action is this week or this month, they compare it to what was the technical action like over the last three years. And gold is created now. Remember, in 2020, uh, the year 2020, in the summer, the, it, the price got up to 2070, I think it was, intraday high, then dropped. Got back up to 2070 again in March of 2022. Okay, so same price level dropped. And that dropped all the way down to 1613. So you actually had a 20% drop in gold at that point. By the way, that's not that big of a deal, but it, everybody thought it was a big deal. We thought it was a bear trap. You turned around in 2023, boom, made a new high. Marginally above those 2070 peaks. Got up to uh, late last year, you got up to 2150. Remember intraday, intranight, actually it was an intranight trade where you went, you hit 2100 and boom, you shot the 2150 in a matter of minutes. And then immediately, because there was a void of orders below, it dropped back down and got back to the high 1900s. So what they're seeing is this constant process of new highs in gold don't hold. That's the pattern that's burned into their mind is because that's what's been going on for the last few years. And they think that's the norm. We argue that this recent surge up to 2200, and we're now above that, credibly, uh, is different. This is not a teaser. This is highly unlikely to drop 150 bucks back down. This time it's likely to engage, and we have momentum, technical reasons to argue that this time, this particular upside probe will get traction and continue. Uh, and I think that's the mistake most technicians are making. They don't look at the bigger picture that they've got this focus on this last three or so years, and that's been a highly abnormal period for gold. Uh, so it's an abnormal template to employ in terms of your analysis. Now, between gold and silver right now, for those looking into the sector and also the miners, obviously we can't give financial advice, but do you anticipate gold to continue to outperform these for any more length of time or will the miners and silver start outperforming quite soon? So if, if someone's looking to get into the sector, they might want to consider silver and the miners. What is your perspective? My own personal uh, assessment uh, is that I'm going to emphasize silver positions using SLV, for example, as an ETF or the Sprott Silver Trust, uh, or the miners, such ETFs as GDX. Uh, also, there's a the silver mining ETF, SIL, uh, which only contains silver miners. 
they both look technically like they're about to engage in a way that will get them back to their highs, the highs of 2020. Remember, for GDX, we're trading 31 plus right now. That high was 45. That's a 50 percent move just to get there. Uh, and I think that could happen fairly quickly if certain numbers are engaged and we have them in our report, certain trigger levels are hit. And at that point, just getting back to its 2020 price high, even though gold is well above that high, will be a more percent move for the miners than will be what gold does in the coming, let's say, six months. Uh, so I think there's a catch up there. And I, therefore, I would I personally what I'm doing is I'm focused more on the miners. Yes, gold is the mama. You got to watch the mama, but the mama's looking good. And I would at this point think that the uh, laggards, silver and the miners are about to snap and catch up. Um, there, there are certain trigger levels that will will pound the table over to our subscribers when we get to them. And we're frankly, we're toying with them right now. You know, another topic we have talked about quite a bit when we have you on is the banking system. Um, as I know, one element that is new since the last time we had you on is the bank term funding program ended uh, the, earlier this month. Um, do you have an update on the current state of the banking system and the stocks currently? No, uh, not really, except to say the banks aren't back to the 2022 highs. OK, so, you know, the, you, you look at the stock market and various components of the stock market and like, you know, small caps and medium caps aren't and banks aren't. And there's a lot of sectors that aren't back to the 2022 highs. And it, th therefore, the stock market's been led by, you know, we all know a handful of stocks. Everybody knows that now, but they seem to think it's going to last forever. <laughs> OK, uh, we doubt it. Uh, but. As far as the vulnerability in the banks, I, I think the vulnerability is going to be pretty broad this time. And I would also be looking like, for example, right now, the XLF, which is the financial broader financial ETF, includes some banks, has just made a marginally higher high than it made a couple years ago uh, by decimals. It's made a new high. So no doubt people are going to cheer that. Uh, it is in the same position as the S&P. It can't sneeze. If it does, I'm going to blow a floor out on its monthly momentum that will suddenly yank it from its, quote, new high back down into some depths. So I'd be looking more broadly than the banks right now. I know that there's a lot of attention focused on that. But quite often when markets break, it's things other than the things that are being watched that cause the upset. Why? Because they surprise. Right now, everybody, you know, they've been, been hearing about banks for over a year now. So there's no surprise element there. So I'd be looking elsewhere, uh, like the broader financials. Uh, and there's other subsectors we're watching as well that, that have extreme technical vulnerability. And, and meaning they could suddenly come go shift from being good looking sectors to be into vastly underperforming sectors. And I think it's likely that the ambush comes that way. And that would probably just push more funds into safe havens like precious metals. Is is that what you think? Yes. And also uh, the T-bond market, which has been over time, it's, this is a true statement about its relation to gold. There's times when T-bonds move with gold, or when their price goes up, yield goes down, gold's going up. There's times when the opposite's the case. So it's not always the case that it's totally in, in sync with gold. But right now it is. It's slightly lagged to gold, actually. Uh, we're watching both long-term, the 30-year T-bond futures and TLT, the ETF of long-term U.S. government bonds. And they're both very ripe for upside breakouts that will continue. The surge that we had from that October low last year was a vertical. Uh, we expected the crash and we expected the vertical low. But since December, they've backed off modestly, not, not terrifically, but they've not given up the gains from that October low. That shocked the Fed. That, that collapse. But the pullback we've seen in T-bonds lately, meaning higher yields, uh, we think is about to be arrested and they're about to go through the, the price levels we saw back in December, meaning rates go down again. I think that will be also inverse to the S&P 500. So when you're watching the stock market, expect gold to behave opposite. But also watch the T-bonds because they could become for a while anyway, let's call it for several quarters, uh, a, a popular alternative to the stock market. And uh, I, I think, you know, it, it's it's a place to look for a while. I'm not talking a long-term bull condition for the T-bonds, but something that would be uh, jolting. 
and likely to be the opposite of what's going on in the stock market. And for our viewers who are looking to uh, continue to analyze all of this, where can they find you online and sign up for your newsletter? OliverMSA.com. It's a website. We explain our methodology, our history, and so forth. Uh, and, you know, you can request sample copies. It'd be fine to send them to you. And uh, we cover all four major asset categories because especially this day and age, they're linked. You know, what one does, the other might do the opposite. You get, what, you get the point. And so we cover stock markets, bond markets, foreign exchange, and commodities with an emphasis on gold and silver. And it seems like the shift that you've been talking about, as, as we've talked about, it seems to be coming to a head now where this will actually uh, start going into high gear. Can you share with our viewers kind of some of the key indicators that people should be looking at and paying attention to right now? And any last thoughts you had? Well, again, on the S&P, I think when it starts to crack, you could find a void below it for, you know, a double digit percent drop. And that gets very, very dangerous. So I'll throw out one number for you. If you're a long term investor and you don't believe what MSA said, get out in January of 2022. Uh, most stock market sectors are below that. So if you got out, you, you're fine. Yeah, it's come back up some. But you, even the S&P is only 5 percent higher than it was two years ago. You could have done better in a CD. But uh, anyway, I think the stock market has trigger levels, like I said, roughly 1% below we are right now, starting next month. But there's a level below is the kind of level that if you broke it, you could get crash like dimensions. That's down near 4300 on the S&P. Now you say, well, that's nine, 900 points away. Well, that's not that's just that's a double digit percent. But you know, you could easily get there. You're talking, you know, less than 20 percent. Uh, and so we see enough dominoes that could be triggered to get you down there. And, and if you ever get there, I think the whole bottom comes out from under. But there's a lot of trigger levels between here and there that should be watched and heated. And I think that as those get triggered, you're going to see upside action in certain other markets. Fantastic. Well, Oliver, thank you so much for joining us today. And God bless. Thank you, Elijah. This is Kaiser Johnson with Liberty and Finance, and these are the Miles Franklin Weekly Specials for March 25th through April 1st, 2024, while supplies last. First, we feature 2023 one-ounce silver Krugerrands at $3.10 over spot. We also have backdated one-tenth ounce gold Canadian maples at $35 over melt with a minimum order of four. And finally, we're offering our choice one-ounce palladium bars at just $119 over spot. To order our specials or any of the many other options we have available, call us at 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237. We're available after hours and on weekends, and we look forward to speaking with you.